Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> oh, look how beautiful you look. How handsome you look. Oh my oh. God, San Francisco's treating you well. Could you tell? <laughs> What keeps me going each day is having a sense of positivity about anything that's around the corner. I am a T910 paraplegic and I got paralyzed from what's similar to an aneurysm and it ruptured in my spinal cord. People are surprised that I take care of myself 100%. My main goal with the show is to open up people's minds and eliminate some of the fears and, and stereotypes. My name is Mia and I'm a push girl. Push girls, go to SundanceChannel.com for videos, top 10 lists and more. It's time to push <laughs> with a push girl. Oh my yes. God. Yes. Oh my, this woman is so beautiful inside out. Uh, she's an actress, a public speaker, a dancer, an ambassador, a graphic designer. Ah, uh, Mia Shikowitz. There she is. <laughs> We're back in the house. The gang's back together. Back in the house. So, what's new? Oh, not much, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a boring year. Oh, my God. How are you de dealing with all this pandemic uh, stuff? Pretty well, actually. Um, yeah. yeah, I I mean, I, I kind of have a homebody-ish part of me. Yeah. So there's that, um, that kind of, you know, I embraced more of that side of myself, but I realized that there's so many things that I never really had time to focus on that I wanted to focus on. So I kind of shift gears a little bit and did a little bit more introspective stuff and um, personal projects this year. So I don't feel like it's been a wash, you know, I feel that there's been a lot of growth. And that's been such a positive gift, really. I mean, there's always a gift within anything that happens. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I've definitely found the gifts this year, for sure. I tell you, every time I see you have this glow about you, this <laughs> smile, this, uh, it's just, you know, you, you're a kind of person who makes people feel comfortable. Really? Oh, that's complimentary. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. I mean, relaxed, comfortable, and it's, it's sort of like a healing kind of, oh, it's me. You know, that's so, so beautiful you say that because one other person has told me that in my life and it really stuck with me because, stuck, stuck with me? Stuck with me. You stuck, um, stuck with me, yeah. yeah. Um, because my dad has that influence on me and I've always wanted to kind of emulate my dad. Like everyone loves my daddy. So like he is that healing thing that you want to be around. And so when someone told me that once, I'm like, oh, like my dad, you know? And so it's, that's super, like the best compliment I could ever get. So thank uh, you. I, well, thank you. I want people to feel comfortable. I, I feel that, you know, there's too much uncomfortableness in the world that we can take on. And there's yeah. so many opportunities that we can really focus and shift our viewpoints onto something that keeps us at peace and keeps us growing and keeps us happy. And yeah. sometimes it takes a little more work, but it's always an option, so. Right, in fact, connected to that, yeah. I want, I usually don't start off with this question, but I wanted to throw it out right at the beginning. Go for it. What brings you the most joy? Um, Good question. I don't know if I have a most. Like I can think, you know, I, it would just be a, a lot of things that would be tied. Um, one being being around my dad. <laughs> um, the other is yeah, being around like close friends that my brother calls it the heart, the the hearty belly laugh. Like people, like the people you can like really have those like hearty belly laughs with. Um, I love to laugh, so that's one thing that's super joyful. Um, the other is music. I love music, not necessarily being able to make music, but yeah. I appreciate music. 
Um, and I, you know, I played instruments as a kid, but I, and I never listened to my parents when they're like, when you get older, you're going to want to be able to play these instruments. Um, but yeah, ignore that, but now I appreciate it way more. Um, and yeah, I would say dance art. I love to do art, um, anything artistic, anything creative. Yeah. I really realized that once I shifted my career more into graphic design specifically, that it made me feel more of who I am and at peace all the time because I'm actually doing what I love and what's therapeutic for me. And that is constantly creating um, and interacting with people and, and collaborating with people on their art. And um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons also I love to dance is because that's also a super collaborative process and all, it's so creative. Like you never know what's gonna come out of dance and choreography, um, especially when you're dancing with people that have different bodies than you. And you're like, all right, well, I can do this. And then you can do this. So let's see how we can match it up. And I, I just love that. I love that process. Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, I have a list of like all these questions and so a few of them, of course I know, but then other ones I'm going, I, I have to ask you this. And I want to connect to the dancing and, and the acting and everything. Yeah. But uh, we have four students coming in today and I thought we'd bring them in to just enjoy the majority of this. So I'm yeah. going to just, push one button and go boom <laughs> and then they'll all pop in oh uh, we have Blair Webb we have Devon Morgan we have Telly hey David hey we have Ashley Anderson everyone Mia Schreikowitz hey guys. how are you <laughs> thanks for being on here with me it's super fun I like them eerie <laughs> thank you thank you yeah these I think these are like my favorite because they go with everything and they're just super casual but you could also wear them dressy you know they're a good choice I, I have to say thank you for the compliment have you ever designed jewelry yes I have actually I have my um my best friend from when I moved out to LA with we started a jewelry company together um we would just do stuff and then we would have house um boutique um like uh, sales and stuff like that. And we did like really well. And then she moved to Florida. And so we've been on opposite coasts ever since. And it's a little bit hard because we liked making the jewelry together, um, but we still have um, plans to reconvene and start that again sometime. Cause that's also something therapeutic and makes me super happy. I love jewelry. Right, right. We were just talking before you all came on, uh, of course, about dancing. Yeah. And, and now when did you really desire and want yeah. to dance or when did you realize, you know? Yeah, well, I always danced when I was a kid, a really little kid. So I had it in my blood, but then I started to focus on other things, um, more athletic stuff that's like, you know, team sport related. Um, and then I did a little bit of cheerleading and then I came out to LA and I met Ati Angel, who's on Push Girls with me. And um, she kind of put that bug in me or she's like, come, you know, like I would see her. She's like, come join my dance team. Um, so I basically learned how to dance again, um, starting off with her. And then um, and then that kind of grew from there. And then I met Marissa um, from Infinite Flow and started doing dance with them. And yeah, it's just kind of evolved throughout the people that I've met and, and had a passion for it as well. And um, it's been an awesome journey. I never thought I'd be dancing professionally yet. What, how old am I? 40, 42. <laughs> so it's been- um, You're ageless. I, it's a, it, keeps me, it keeps me ageless on the inside. I don't know about the outside, but um, it is, it's a blast. And um, yeah, I feel super, super grateful to be able to have met these people that have brought it back into my life. Cause it is something that I always love to do. And, um, and I just kind of shifted away from it. So it's good to be back. Yeah. You now I know you, you where you met Angela. Yes. Um, no, where did yeah, you at your class. I <laughs> know. Yeah, that was like, I remember that day too. Yeah. Like, yeah. The I energy. You. Oh my God. The energy was in the room. It's like, okay, there's something going on here. This is something's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. That was so meant to be. And that is, it's so funny because you think about how, like, where that took us um, since then. But that was the moment. Yeah. It was in your class at her house. Right. Now, did you meet Auntie that same night or was it? No, I actually met Auntie um, completely separately. I met her at an audition once. Um, huh? And it was funny because we were both about to go in and then she like ran to the bathroom and then I got called in. So, um, but right before that, she's like, 
oh, you know, I want you to join my dance team and like, you know, I'll get your info. And then when I came out of the audition, she wasn't there. I guess maybe she had gone in or a different room or whatever. So we completely missed each other. And then like fast forward years later, um, we reconnected again. And I, I wanna say probably through Angela actually, um, I think one of Angela's um, events or something, maybe a birthday party. Um, and that's how we reconvened. So it was actually through Angela that we, that we reconnected. Um, but yeah, I mean, all these um, interactions, you never know, right? They could seem like they're just in passing like a, a person and then they become like one of your best friends later. So I, I love the fact that you can always think about, you know, when you are in an audition room and you are sitting next to somebody, you know, they could be your future best friend or future spouse or who knows, you know, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like an exciting thing too, um, to be in the acting world where you do get to meet people at auditions that are similar to you or should be in the same category as you in some ways. Right. Um, so yeah, so you can create a big, a big family that way. Um, I like to not feel um, competition in those rooms. I like to feel like, okay, we're all out here for the, the same purpose and that's to get more exposure for people with disabilities and, and also to help, you know, the, the negative stereotypes become something that's really positive and positive and more accurate. Um, so if we're all on the same page and we all have the same goals, then there's no losing. Like we're all, we're all in it together. Well, I mean, I don't want to hog the question. So who would like to ask a first question? <laughs> I love it. I'm an open book. My life is on TV. I'm an open book. <laughs> I love it. Should we, uh, should we start with uh, Devon? <laughs> um, I wish I, I, I wish I really wasn't Wanda this week. Um, uh, Mila. Oh, Mia. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Mia. Um, my name is Devon. Hi, Devon. Now, yeah, nice to meet you. You know, you look really stylish there. You know, I like the <laughs> you, you know that you got going on. <laughs> so so fabulous. Um. I mean, my question for you is that, I mean, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I used to watch Puss Girls on the Sundance channel and yeah. it was real. I loved it. Um, cool. you, you know, you were fantastic. You were amazing. Like you were a good dancer. And, um, now, now, now was there any, like, um, was there any drama like between scenes, like, like, you know, some episodes, they have a little drama going on. Like, now, was there any drama between, oh. like, I'm going to say, like, one, either you or one of the girls on set that maybe, I, I don't know. I'm just. No, that's a good question. It's a totally good question. <laughs> totally valid. And I get that a lot. I was theorizing. No, no, it's, <laughs> no, it's totally accurate. So I would say that um, there wasn't, like, we were already friends, right? Okay. So we were kind of just um, filming us. And we didn't really have, we didn't have drama before that. Um, if, if anything, I felt like the drama was kind of within our own lives because it did get very stressful to, um, to have all of a sudden your life being filmed. And especially the first season, because we had no idea what the final product would be. So we didn't know how much they were going to be taking and how much they um, was really going to make it in and, and what the storylines were. We were really clueless. Like they would just say like, okay, show up here and we'll film you. And, and then, then we would see the finished cut like at the very, um, and actually when you guys saw it was when we mm. would see it. Um, so, but I, I would say that it was stressful. I wouldn't say um, drama between us, but there was stressful. And even, you know, I think that if the show tried to portray that that way, especially maybe in more in the second season, um, is just because that's TV for you. Like they, they just want to like up the ante a little bit and um, things seemed way more dramatic than they actually were probably. Um, there were times when we had to kind of, you know, put a little needle in our sides to, to make it a little bit more um, va boom, should I say? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but um, as far as us as, as friends and friendships, we're still friends. Like there's, there was nothing that happened that, you know, caused us to have a huge riff and not speak to each other. So yeah, so that was because yeah. that could happen on very sure. Yeah. I have a, a, in connection to the push girls, 
Yes. Uh, now this is this is like a far out kind of question. But when I say push girls, yeah. what first comes to your mind? Um, uh, you know, it's funny. The first thing I, that comes to my mind is just the the logo <laughs> because I'm a graphic designer, probably. So I think it's images like that. Um, <laughs> that's like visually. But then, like from that point on, like I basically think of not only girls, honestly. But I think of people that just keep pushing throughout their life and whether they're in a wheelchair or not. I mean, I think we're all pushing through obstacles and things that come in our way that we have no idea, you know, whether they're going to, you know, be life changing or not. Sometimes, sometimes the smallest thing that comes up in our life is the most difficult. So um, you just never know what's going to change you. And I think that when you start to look at things coming your way and that you can push through everything, then we're all push girls. Well, you know, what's so interesting. I know it's like, it's not really safe to say, but it, it's it's true. I really I really feel that way. Uh, well, and 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 I was reading, I was looking on your website, and I was going, ah, oh, you have all these amazing quotes and talk uh, and what you do. And one of the the quotes that kept, the kept the one that keeps hitting me yeah. is believing in yourself means never having to say I can't. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. That's true because. If you, I mean, people talk about loving yourself and yes, that is absolutely true. But sometimes you can love yourself and not necessarily speak yourself kindly. And one of the ways that you don't speak to yourself kindly is telling yourself that you can't um, because that's not true. <laughs> you absolutely can. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to do it in whatever it is, right? Like even with swimming, it's like when I went back to swimming, it was, okay, well, I'm not going to be swimming the same way. You know, so I could say, oh, I can't swim anymore. But the truth is, is that I can swim. Just I do, do it a little differently. Well, you and, used to compete, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it was very um, emotional for me to go back to swimming specifically because that was kind of my sport of heart, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it took me a little bit of um, emotional courage to build up that time when I was ready to say, OK, well, I can and I will. And, um, and that didn't mean that I had to do everything the way I thought that it had to be done before right. that. Um, it's just kind of think outside the box because life is like that. Um, life is not a box for a reason. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a huge, huge model of mine. Not to say I can't because there are also that when I first got paralyzed, I have to say that I made that that's actually what helped me get through a lot of things was there were times when I thought, oh, well, oh, I can't go with my friends to, you know, such and such because there's no elevator or whatever the case may be. And then I thought, wait a minute, if I'm going to say I can't in, in reference to anything with the wheelchair, then I'm going to specifically make sure that I do um, because I wanted to make sure that I can't did not become a paralysis for me. Today, I'm going to try to swim for the first time in 17 years. I've been wanting to do this for so long, but I keep hesitating because I was afraid I was gonna lose my enjoyment from it. If I lost my enjoyment from it, I'd feel like getting paralyzed took something away from me. If my challenge was to be in a wheelchair for life, I wouldn't make it a hindrance and keep me from doing things I wanted to do. I need to try this because it could be something. Putting my feet in the water was weird because I couldn't feel it. And I didn't know if it was gonna be cold or hot. I think I'm afraid of feeling weak and feeling limited and feeling trapped. I didn't know if I'd make it, but once I did, I was really happy. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is doable. I knew at that moment that I was back. Woo! We are a group of four women coming together, embracing a catastrophic event, and turning tragedy into triumph. Having the strong friendship with the girls is everything. Thank you for being here and being in my life. We are so strong individually, so together that just makes it even more like dynamite.